the Anunnaki or Anungi, the destructive reptiles. The Anunnaki were also known as the Seven Martu Gods. An Akkadian hymn about the seven harmful spirits is as follows. They are the destructive reptiles, even the winds that create evil. As an evil reptile, as an evil wind, do they appear. As an evil reptile, as an evil wind, who marches in front are they. Children, monstrous, kitmal utu, monstrous sons are they. Messengers of the pest demon are they. Throne bearers of the goddess of Hades are they. The whirlwind, Martu, which is poured upon the land, are they. The seven are gods of the widespread heaven. The seven are gods of the widespread earth. The seven are the gods of the four zones. The seven are gods, seven in number. Seven evil gods are they. Seven evil demons are they. Seven evil consuming spirits are they. In heaven are they seven. Seven are they. Seven are they. In the hollow of the deep, seven are they. In the hollow of the deep, seven are they. In the glory of heaven, seven are they. In the hollow of the deep, in a palace, grew they up. In the original, from the hollow, came they forth. Male, they are not. Female, they are not. They are the dust storm, the troubled ones are they, wife they possess not, child is unborn to them, order and kindliness know they not, they hearken not to prayer and supplication, from the horse of the mountain came they forth. Of Ea are they the foes, the throne bearers of the gods are they. To trouble the canal in the street are they. Evil are they. Evil are they. Seven are they. Seven are they. Seven doubly said are they. Another poet of Eridu in a hymn to the fire god speaks of the seven spirits in a similar language. O God of fire, he asks, how were those seven begotten? How grew they up? Those seven in the mountain of the sunset were born. Those seven in the mountain of the sunrise grew up. Throughout, they are regarded as elemental powers and their true character as destructive winds and tempests is but thinly veiled by a cloak of poetic imagery, but it will be noticed that they already belong to the harmful side of nature. And though the word which I have rendered evil, after the example of the Semitic translators, means rather injurious than evil in our sense of the word, they are already the products of night and darkness. Their birthplace is the mountain behind which the sun sinks into the gloomy lower world. In the 22nd book on the great work on astronomy compiled for Sargon of Akkad, they are termed the Seven Great Spirits or Gali, and it is therefore possible that they had already been identified with the seven gods of destiny. The Anunnaki, or spirits of the lower world, of the cult of Nippur, in their gradual development into the Semite Ramon. The spirits of the air underwent a change of parentage.
Matu, as we have seen, was like the kindred wind gods of Eridu, the offspring of Ea. But the home of the wind is rather the sky than the deep, and Meri, the shining firmament, was naturally associated with the sky. When Anna, the sky, therefore became the Semitic Anu, Rimon, who united in himself Matu and Meri, and other local gods of wind and weather as well, was made his son. Many names, many faces. The seven are the seven. And what is missing from the four-faced god in regards to them being seven in total? The magic number. Their names vary, but their number is invariable. This doesn't necessarily mean that their numbers are seven. It could simply mean the number they or it uses is the number seven, meaning the seven are one. The mountain where the sun sets sounds like Britain, or possibly the legendary city of Arata, which I believe may actually have been in the Ukraine. But what have I found on my home turf? Matunus, or Matunos, was a god in Brythonic cultic polytheism. His name may be derived from the same root as the Proto-Celtic Matu. He was worshipped in Roman Britain, and altar stones raised to him have been recovered in the United Kingdom, such as at High Rochester and at Risingham. The god may be parallel with Mercury Arteus who might also have Ursin connotations. A similarly named Gaulish god Martutinus is attested in at least three inscriptions from Switzerland. In all three, he is identified with Mercury. I think it is now undeniable. The seven can be one, and they have been reformed many times with many names and many faces. From seven, number four would be the no defining point of duality, meaning it is the same forwards as back. Please hit that notification bell to ensure you are notified of each upload. Share, like, comment and subscribe to support the channel for more Ancient Mysteries.